Hey, today we're just hanging on the back porch doing a casual cook along, but I'm also gonna show you one of my favorite new ingredients. You guys wanna see how we make this? Here we go. All right, to get started, today's uh, video is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, we're gonna be like a little bit more laid back, a little bit more casual, a little bit more fun to be around, I guess I should say. Bare limit. <laughs> You're always fun. Well, just like the editing. You know, a lot of times it's just straight to the point. So whether you like the video or not, just leave a comment down below. I'm sure you'll tell me whether you like it or not regardless the point is i'm gonna have fun i'm gonna cook what i like to cook uh there's an asian restaurant that opened up a little while ago but it seemed like it's built up a lot of hype and uh, uh the wife went there the other day and brings home some dinner and it was just completely devastated in the fact that like it was just i felt like it was lacking flavor completely and once again i just feel like we could just make so much better with small steps not really teaching today i'm just gonna have fun so we're gonna show you like a list of the ingredients and we're gonna use a 22 inch blackstone griddle this is the idea Chicken teriyaki slash noodle stir fry slash with vegetables. Okay, so it's kind of about three components. And the reason is, I feel like that's where a lot of the Asian dishes I feel like get lost in translation. I feel like there's a lot of complex flavors that could happen, but the lazy part of the commercialization of Asian flavors is everything's just thrown in. You add a sauce, toss it all together, and then everything tastes the same, which is honestly when you say the reason why I don't like pizza, <laughs> yeah, I like pizza. I shouldn't say that. I love, uh, I, don't know, I like pizza, but I just don't crave pizza like some people do. To me, once you take a couple bites, have a couple slices, it all tastes the same. You like when there's different bites yeah. instead of eating a whole dish that tastes the exact same, like a fried rice dish. Everything yep. is, you know. Everything after. tastes the same, everything. So hopefully today we can separate it in categories and make a fantastic dish, all right? So very little editing to show you the full process, the whole cook and all that stuff. There is one thing I need to do off camera. Uh, we have some lo mein. Um, I'm gonna take some of these noodles. I've just got some water and I've added some chicken bouillon because I feel like that extra pop of flavor will go good together. The wind started blowing. Yep. It was not blowing earlier. <laughs> I'm gonna need a jacket. All right. Why this is why this is going on before I even start because it's gonna take a while for this griddle to heat up. We are gonna need some higher heat today. Because so, it's cold. So we're using the mini peppers. Why? Well, I think it's good bang for the buck. You get the multicolor. I'm telling you what, peppers are. The price of peppers are through the roof. If you're buying a bell pepper today, you must be in the higher echelon of income. They wanted what? $159 for a, for a single pepper. $159 for a single pepper. $4.99 for a pack of three. And I'm like, Jiminy Christmas, it's just a bell pepper, people. The thing about stir fries is you try to get your vegetables uh, like-minded, right? Because they're all gonna try to cook at the same time, the same temp and all that stuff. So just be kind of careful about that. We've done several stir fries in the past. We've done several teriyakis in the past. This is not what I would call a traditional style teriyaki. We actually have a teriyaki Hawaiian beef that was from a recipe from a guy from the Hawaiian Islands from his family passed down from generation to generation. So if you want to see how to make a real one. And that uh, was fantastic. And we have a recipe on the website for that. We do. This is more of me just coming out here, cooking to what I like, adding the flavors I like, and just seeing what happens. And trying to finish up before all the bowl games start. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today's bowl day. Yeah, yeah. You have to, so. People said, just be more relaxed when I, I sent out, did we mention that I sent out a thing on the Facebook group? Asking for video ideas because you needed some inspiration. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just end up cooking the same stuff or the ideas or the the videos just seem the same way. And I was like, you know what? Let's just switch it up a little bit. Let's just have a different video today. This is exactly what happens when you guys go to the grocery store. <laughs> you just try to figure out what you want to make. I'm gonna put that big carrot back. We don't want, we don't need any comments from the peanut gallery on that one well yeah i mean you get so excited about eating something with all the hype and you get it home and then you're so disappointed and you're like geez sometimes it's that just really ruined you that so, that asian restaurant that... I, I just think it's about execution i really just think that it's you know like build depths of flavor you know like textures colors um you know flavor concepts just something to
Uh, let's cut this one in half. I'm just thinking about how long it takes to cook, cook a carrot. You know, something just to change it up a little bit. You know, you just, we have our uh, Blackstone heating up. It's gonna be interesting to see how much heat retention we have on it. Kind of excited about that. I am uh, cutting our portions down a little bit today. Um, I just don't think we need 15 pounds of noodles and you know, and all that stuff, so. The kids won't eat it. It's got too many vegetables in it. Boy, ain't that the truth. But <laughs> we do have this big old thing of broccoli that the kids love. They love steamed broccoli. So we've got broccoli in the bowl. Um, one thing about a stir fry, that's way too much broccoli. One thing about a stir fry, uh, you definitely want to go to mise en place all your ingredients. Have everything ready, measured out, ready to go, because it will take no time at all to cook these vegetables, especially when they're um, cut down smaller. So you want to definitely take time to prep your vegetables first. And you got to think about your uh, your mouth. Of course, your mouth is different than my mouth. Your mouth can hold a lot more food than mine can. <laughs> What I'm saying is your mouth is bigger than mine. Uh, yeah, I got that. Yeah. You just don't want to pick up a thing of noodle and chicken to have like, you know, a huge nugget, you know, something like that big and you're trying to fit in your mouth and it's not like a one biter. We have enough vegetables today. We have mushrooms. I'm a mushroom friend. Oh, I need to do my garlic. I'm going to put my garlic right there. Thinly sliced. All right, let me get cleaned up really quick. Do you, I have a question what? real quick. Can I get cleaned up really quick? Do you really think it, do you think fresh garlic makes that much of a difference versus like the squeezable minced? No. I mean, I think sometimes I like using them fresh more. No, not really. I mean, I don't, I don't think you, I, I don't, I'd have to try it side by side. The same exact technique, the same exact recipe. Like, let's say you just took a chicken breast and you added fresh garlic versus the, pre, the you know, the chopped garlic. I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not doing a video on it, but that would be a good question. I know some people automatically are going to say fresh is always better, but I don't think you can. Especially if you mix it up with a ton of ingredients. All right, just got our vegetables chopped, prepped, cleaned up a little bit. So, I've seen this in the grocery store several times. Um, and... When I see a lot of like recipes online, or a lot of people make this stuff, uh, they typically have those long, skinny red peppers, like red chilies. But for some reason, between my four grocery stores that we frequent often, it's not necessarily something they have in the uh, the produce aisle a lot. I, I don't. I've actually had a hard time finding it. I don't. They might have had it, and I skipped it that day. But whatever it was, I've been in three grocery stores the last couple of days, and neither one of them had it. So I've seen this on the shelf several times at Let's multiple see. grocery stores. I think there's actually a website on here. And I, I'm, I'm sure there's other flavors. I'm sure there's other brands. I'm not supporting this brand or anything like that, but I do know that is, you know, maybe it could be a substitute. So we're gonna try it out. I've always suggested that when you buy something brand new, you taste it. You can taste that one. It looks spicy. <laughs> I was excited about the garlic to be in there too. Garlicky, spicy. I think it's gonna work perfect with the noodles. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. Let me taste. Ooh, I like that. Oh, we're gonna get a bunch of comments now because I'm licking. Oh, jeez. Licking the same spoon as you. Ooh, it's not that bad. Ooh, I that actually is good. like it. Wow. All right. Well, that's how you taste stuff, right? If you ever try a new recipe and they have something in there that you've never tried before, I highly encourage you. To buy the ingredient and then taste it. If you don't like the ingredient, don't add it. I don't care what it is, but you got to like the stuff that you eat, right? Don't just take somebody else's word for it. That is fine. I'm deal. That's probably going to be a pantry staple. That might be a new you staple. You can add that yeah. with different things. I like the fact it's got that garlic in there. That means I can use that garlic for something else. All right, here we go. All right, the black stone is still heating up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm calling it a uh, teriyaki chicken but I'm adding a little more depth of flavor. So this is gonna be our chicken marinade, okay? I'm a sweet chili Dad, kind of guy. Just blowing the hair in my face. I'm a sweet chili, I'm just eyeballing, okay? I'm only using one chicken breast today. 
slice it thin and show you guys that. Just a little bit of ginger. If I'm guessing, here, let's guess. What do you think? One tablespoon of chili sauce, one teaspoon of ginger. I'm a ginger fan. Dang, that wind is cutting like a knife. Another thing, step out of your comfort zone. I think this is dominating like the American market, the brand Kiko Min itself. I'm not against it. I've used it my whole life. But on this culinary journey of cooking on the back porch and relating information to you guys and all that stuff, a lot of people told me the same thing. Try different soy sauces. This dark soy sauce is a hair thicker. Um, I enjoy it. So, yeah, try, try different soy sauces. You'll be amazed. I'm going to do like a 50-50. I'm just eyeballing see how much I have left. So one, two, and a half. So we'll do probably same thing with this. We'll do three catfuls. One, two, three. Oyster sauce, one of my pantry favorites. I love it. Probably one tablespoon of that. Just eyeballing it. Add a little consistency to the sauce, a little thickness. We've got the sweet chili. Now we're going to add this. That is actually really good for yeah. Asian dishes. I think a spoon's too big for it. I don't know. So that's a that's a good teaspoon. So maybe two teaspoons. Two good teaspoons. Yeah. Maybe like, which is maybe two and a half teaspoons. <laughs> Could be. That's the good thing about doing this video. That I don't have to worry about measurements or anything like that. Just give you ballpark ideas. And like anything, good pinch of pepper. We don't need salt in there because of the uh, soy sauce. Oh, we don't have any sugar out here. I need a taste for sugar. I know one thing. I'm in love with that little chili stuff. That stuff is good. Yeah. <laughs> probably a good, let's see, that's probably... Right there is probably one packed tablespoon. So probably two good packed tablespoons. What I try to do, I don't like my stuff too sweet. I like my stuff more balanced, right? When I tasted this without the sugar, you can just taste the tartness. So add a little sugar in there to, you can use white sugar too. I just tasted the sauce, it's a little salty. Added a, a tablespoon, another tablespoon of brown sugar, and we should be right there. So now you're seeing the consistency that it we're looking look for. It does look like a nice consistency. Yeah, and it'll reduce on the griddle, right? You want it kind of thick. All right. So, boiling water it goes, and while this is boiling, we'll cut our chicken. Just show you really quick, that's what I use, the bouillon, flavor of the broth. Better than bouillon. Yeah. When you show things, you need to wait a second. <laughs> Well, for the camera to like focus oh there we go so i'm just going to drain the liquid now you can save the liquid i would highly encourage it these are dang good noodles they actually remind you of chicken noodle soup they're really good but the reason is because i'm going to take the extra chicken breast we use a little celery a little carrot a little mushroom and i'm gonna have me some healthy chicken soup for later noodles are done let's get to the chicken i waited for the poultry to the last part Show you guys really quickly. Take a breast. Instead of pounding it out or anything like that, we're going to just use manageable pieces, which we will just basically cut in half. And then take this, cut this in half. And the good thing about making stuff like this at home is I guarantee you get more protein, more vegetable, more everything when you make your stuff versus the... And if your restaurants are like ours was, <laughs> guaranteed it'll be better tasting too. <laughs> uh, when you open up your chicken, you actually see which way the grains are going. So we're gonna cut against the grain. And we're actually just going to cut this actually pretty, pretty thin. I wouldn't say paper thin, but... You gonna tell them about your crock pot idea? Yes, I will. So, uh, since it's getting cold, uh, for you that it, it, don't... It's not getting... Uh, we're there, honey. We're there. <laughs> for, you, for you guys that uh, maybe don't know, we started a new YouTube channel called Pellets and Pits because we, you know, we reached out a couple fillers and a lot of people felt like it might be nice to separate the two since griddle cooking is so uniquely different. And I thought, you know, that's fair because I'm not going to stop grilling. 
I mean, I don't care. I love grilling. Um, but what I thought was we could do a series or a quick run on like crock pot style dinners that still use the griddle. So I do have a couple ideas in mind that I think would be fantastic. I think crock pot is probably, I would say universally more popular. Since it's getting cold, we can make a lot of the product inside. Uh, turn the crock pot on and let it stew for hours and hours and then do something uh, with the leftover product on a griddle to make fantastic recipes. So if you guys would kindly just comment below, let me know what you think, because I do think that we have some fantastic ideas available. But I don't know if you guys want to see them. You know what I thought when you said turn the crock pot on? <laughs> That's why I bought that jacket. Now you, There's one eliminating excuse. I'm too cold. I'm too tired. Some people might not know what turn the crock pot on really means. <laughs> Everybody by this time knows. Not only is a crock pot hey, on. When your husband is out cooking you a fantastic dinner, that's one way to turn the crock pot on, you know? In 34 degree weather. All right, chicken is done. See, very thin, very universal. I am gonna go inside and wash my hands real quick. Yep, we always keep these vegetables like crudite style cut up in the house. So I'm just taking some celery, carrots, and onions, and then in the bowl, in the pot it goes. Very good chicken soup later. And that's just that chicken stock. Yep. From the noodles. Yep. That one chicken breast that we didn't use cut up. A little fantastic style. Maybe add some garlic. I'll add some more flavorings later, but that just gets us going right there. All right, everything is mise en place accordingly. Got everything cleaned up from the chicken. So we should be good to go. We got our vegetables ready to go. We got our noodles, we got our sauce. We have our chicken, okay? Layers of flavor, trying to separate the two. Here we go. First things first, some avocado oil. We'll say the right side of the griddle is heating up about uh, mid 400s. I'm just gonna take a little pinch of salt, some pepper, kind of keep that neutral and get those going. A little more oil. Going to take a quick second, let that heat up. Spread the grill pretty good. And I like to spread the chicken out. I like for my chicken not to be mounded up. Did it freeze together? <laughs> well, it feels like it. I know. It might have. It looks like it Golly, I think it did. <laughs> so far, it seems like the griddle is holding up the temp. We haven't had any sauces yet, which I'm sure at that point it will drop. Uh, we have it on a like a medium high, but you got to remember my griddle is different than your griddle. If you don't have this griddle, we can get to that later. Got plenty of videos about it. Not every griddle is created equal, so you might not need this much temperature on your griddle. So just be careful. Not using all the sauce just in case. You just never know. So now what we're doing is separating our flavors. We're allowing that chicken to cook in the sauce.
if you notice, especially to new griddle owners, we don't really teach a lot of times temperature on the griddle because so many fluctuations happen. If you see right now, you see how the sauce is reducing? That's what I'm looking for, okay? You see over here, there's not much sauce reducing because it's how the griddle's cooler. So what we're gonna do is move the product. You can hear it, you hear that? Which means this side of the grill, see how much more vicious that is? It's because that part of the griddle's hotter. Which is probably because there wasn't food on it previously. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we do now, I'm trying to keep everything on half the griddle because I teach you clean as you go. Right at the very end, while it's calming down, I'm gonna add the rest of that sauce so we don't lose all of it. Okay, so here we go, this is the trick. Let that do its thing. Okay. Get those sugars off of there as fast as possible because they're gonna harden up like crazy. Not a lot, just a few drops of water. Notice I'm not trying to drown the griddle. Shut that part of the griddle off. So now this is shut off. So here we go. Being a clean surface, a little oil. This was the idea. I'll go and add this first. That's that same crunchy garlic. Yep. Spice, whatever. I do know, you know, you asked a question earlier about garlic. If, um, if you thought it made that much of a difference, fresh versus whatever. I do know that when we do the fried rice, I know for a fact that when you add the fresh garlic into the rice. Oh yeah. We thought that that made a huge yep. difference in all the searches or the research that we did. Get that heated up some. Mm. There you go. See how fragrant it is? Yep. Yep. Smells good. Right at the very end, not a lot. Don't overpower it. You're trying to build layers of flavor. Maybe a tablespoon. Of soy sauce. Yes. And there you go. So now I'm gonna incorporate the noodles and the vegetables. People ask, what about healthy recipes? And I thought, absolutely. This is not that bad of a recipe if you look at it for what it is. Um, you can always, always, always take out the noodles if you're on that type of uh, carb style or healthy or whatever like that. So really just to know why you're going the healthy route. So see how our sauce is kind of thickened up nicely? Ooh, that looks good, babe. Yeah, look at there. That's perfect. 
That is definitely not the color you got from the restaurant. No. I don't know if I can have it without it. A little sriracha for me. I gotta be honest, you don't need it. It's really, really good without it. I snuck a piece. Before we even get to that, I just did my intro. Look, the griddle's already clean. I've already brought it up to temperature and it's burning the oil or it's burning all the rest of the stuff off. So when you talk about how tough it is to clean, you know, you just gotta, gotta go with it. It's but not hard to clean. It's not. You it's been gotta, two minutes, yeah, probably. With a sticky substance. All right, so what you're saying is I should try yours first, since it doesn't without have Without the sriracha? I mean, it's fantastic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm. Wow. Here, let me try this one without the sriracha. The noodles. I know, those noodles are super good. That's a good noodle. It's a good noodle. It's a good, that crunchy garlic sauce. It's not over sweetened, but there's flavor there. Mm. Mm. That's perfect. That, that honestly is better than anything we've gotten at any Chinese restaurant. I That's what like. drives me nuts is not only is it cheaper for you to make at home, it's probably more enjoyable because you get to do it with your kids or spouse. What's well, not more enjoyable for me? <laughs> <laughs> but you also get more bang for the buck and typically get more flavor. So people wonder why, like why we have griddles, why we do this, why we do that. This is a perfect example. A person from East Tennessee uses common ingredients that's using um, Asian cooking. And a lot of times we can make it better just because we're using mm. more product per person, I think, a lot of times. So we're mm. not worried about food costs. But it's fantastic. That's super good. I want to Definitely. Do it. I didn't know if I'd like it. I'm glad that we is... bought it. And they do have, for the people out there, like hot stuff out on right to the next of it or, you know, on the shelf, they had a hotter version. Obviously, we didn't go that route. Um, but where did we get that one from? This one came from Kroger, but I know for a fact my Ingles um, has several different types as well. So there you go. That's just hanging out on the back porch. Me having fun, trying to create something that was just better than what we had. I think we no doubt squashed that. Um, I think cleaned the griddle, chopped a vegetable, and made an Asian dish. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. You can check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook, where I actually reached out to you guys and said, I need inspiration. So we've got plenty of ideas. Thank you so much for commenting. Um, hope we can hit 2024 with a bang. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, that, 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 share it with your friends. That, 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 that. Peace. Boy, that is. Yeah, that's good. Super good. Mm. That. We, oh, might have to, we might have to make it again and actually write a recipe. We will. <laughs>